Now I will introduce dynamics in our formalism. Uh, I request you to recall that uh, we had been working to calculate the scattering amplitude where we evaluated the effect of potential on the incoming and outgoing wave vector of neutron wave. Now when you talk about uh, inelastic scattering, there there is energy transfer between the neutron and the whole system, the scatterer and neutron and the scatterer forms a total system. So over here then the magnitude of the scattered vector k prime is no more equal to k which was true for the diffraction case. So I need to put a factor of k prime by k because uh, I have to compare the number of neutrons going out for neutrons coming on per second, per second, coming in per second. And that is given by the magnitude. This is k prime by k magnitude. Also, if there is energy exchange between the neutron and the scatterer, neutron plus scatterer is a total system, then there should be an energy conservation during scattering. That means the energy of the system E lambda and the kinetic energy of the neutron in non-relativistic limit which is h square k square by 2m for the incoming neutron must be equal to h square k prime square by 2m plus energy of the scatterer after scattering and this is the energy constant. So I will write down a long formula but it is in the same spirit what I did earlier I will go slowly on this <coughs> and I will derive it for you. So now I write down a scattering cross section earlier I stopped at d sigma de if you remember I wrote d sigma de d sigma d omega per unit solid angle. Now I am writing a cross section which is d2 sigma d omega de that means number of neutrons per unit cell angle per unit energy interval. This first there is a flux normalization. So neutrons coming in versus neutron going out per second. I had this factor earlier also if you remember this part. Now I have to sum over initial states sum over final states then I have the potential V working on neutron of wave vector K system energy lambda and sigma and square of that and here I have to since I am taking all possible outgoing states I have P lambda P sigma now in this expression I need to introduce a delta function. A delta function which takes care of the energy conservation during scattering and it looks like delta this is the energy difference of the neutron before and after and that should be equal to the energy difference of the system because neutron can give or take energy and there should be a balance what neutron gives is taken by the system what system gives should be taken by the neutron. So I write in this I just introduce by hand a delta function 
to say that in this scattering cross section I have constancy of conservation of energy between neutron and the system. Now I do a small trick my delta function There is a way of writing delta function. There are various representations of delta function. I use one of them, which is the integral formalism, which is equal to This is an integral representation of the delta function in time domain. You can see e to the power minus i h cross omega e lambda minus e lambda prime t by h. So this also I can write as Now this integral I will insert inside my statistical averaging expression. So this is what the expression for the delta function I will just mention this. this. I miss this 2 pi h constant term. And I'll insert this delta function inside my ensemble average. Good. So this is what I've written the delta function. And now I have written this part. You can bring in the time, as I said, the delta function. And I'll also introduce a Fourier transform over the potential. Right now I am putting the Fourier transform. We know that the Fourier transform will be Bj e to the power i q dot rj for a delta function potential but if I don't have a delta function potential there is reason for this and I will come to it later but if it's not a delta function then I can write down in general the Fourier transform of the potential as v j q that is the Fourier transform of the potential at site r minus r j and it's uh, vjq it's in q space so now i will write down the expression this expression in which i have k prime k and i know that k prime k gives me e to the power i k minus k prime which is q and vj dagger is a e to the power i q dot r vjr this will come from here. Yes. So, e to the power i i k minus k prime in that factor dot r v j r integral gives me e to the power i q dot r v j q I write it because I write it as an operator It gives me the Fourier transform of the potential. Right now I am not assuming it is not a delta function. I can put delta function at any time and get back my simple expression for the timing. I am not using that. 
<coughs> so I can write this and now the delta function I have a integration over dt e to the power minus i omega t I have lambda k sigma lambda prime k prime sigma prime now this on on k k prime that integral gives me vj dagger q so i'll just write it down please excuse me this long expression but it is important for you this is the first part now I have it is RG or G prime So and also we have summation over lambda lambda prime. So this is a very long expression. <coughs> I will go one by one. So I have used there are these are square. So there are two brackets. So there are two brackets, one complement of each other. It starts with lambda, lambda prime, lambda, lambda prime, squeezed in between vj prime q and vj q, because there are two summations j j prime. Okay. You can see there are two lambda lambda prime and there are two summations over j and j prime. So there are two summations over j and j prime on these two and there are two brackets so you can play play around i can take them this way that way it is allowed because these are just integrals which have values physical values and we can use to move them around so with that i have got this expression and also i have got e to the power i e lambda minus e lambda prime by t by h and I have integration over time and e to the power minus i omega t. Now I will use this thing inside this. That means what I am going to do is that your summation over j is there, lambda prime is there. Now this e to the power minus e lambda i e lambda minus e lambda prime t. I put it inside this bracket so I write it like this inside this averaging bracket this remains now I have e to the power minus i q dot r j prime I bracket it with e to the power i e lambda prime t by h cross and e to the power minus e lambda t by h cross and then rest of the things remain same i have got a summation over lambda summation over lambda prime that means over all possible initial states over all possible final states i have bracketed my rj prime thing between these two and the integral over time remains 
So this is a very interesting thing. What I have done actually, if you see, I have e to the power minus i e t. Sorry. E lam e lambda t by h cross. Then e to the power minus i q dot r j prime i e lambda e lambda prime t by h cross and we have a lambda here and a lambda prime there well other way around lambda prime and lambda here so now first we will use the fact that this I explained to earlier because this is like a projection operator and for any wave function the total number of total projection is equal to 1 because it is like sum of direction cos cosines equal to 1. But now you concentrate on this part that means this terms. I can also turn it around I can bring this one to this side this one to that side. So what happens you know This is the same as putting the Because H H operating on a state lambda gives the energy of the state into wave vector. This is standard rule for eigenfunctions of H in quantum mechanics. And similarly, h lambda will be equal to e lambda. So, this inside the bracket, I can also write I'll say I can write it like this. So this is basically this gives me the time evolution of the operator. This is a time evolution. This is the biggest change now comes in. Why so? Because we know the time dependence either we can put to the wave function 
or you can put to the operator here i am putting this time dependence on operator and we know any static state what is the time variation you know at any time t i can write suppose the wave function is psi at time t then any physical operator at time t will be given by this now for stationary states psi t is given by and psi 0 that means if i consider the wave functions are unchanged then i can write the same thing as So if the set of eigenfunctions are stationary, then the time dependence is absorbed in the operator. And I can find out the average at any time using this. And that's what I have done. I have done over here. So I can write it as e to the power i q dot r j prime t instead of r j. So I have brought in the time dependence of position vector in this. So let me go back. I introduced a delta function. I am going slow. I introduced a delta function to conserve energy in the scattering process then I use a specific expression or representation of delta function in terms of time integral because it is in the energy space then I also introduced the Fourier transform of the potential now I have input this in the large expression where I have put the e to the power minus i e lambda minus e lambda prime t by h cross from the integral over time inside the bracket for vj prime q and that gives me rj prime t because I showed you that for any operator the time dependence is given by e to the power i h t by h cross into the operator into the wave function which is stationary. So either we can take the time dependence on the wave function or on the operator here we take a stationary set of wave functions and the operator is changing and that's how we get the expression which is at zero time in our summation and
sorry i should write down the specifically this goes to if i take it out this will remain for lambda for the other things and i get out average of that outside should be treating good so you can see that i have done the same thing over here in that summation i had probability lambda of state lambda if i consider the summation over lambda prime of lambda prime lambda prime over the, all the projections then i can remove the summation over lambda prime and because summation over lambda prime summation over this summation gives me 1 so that summation i am removing from there i am removing from there i have brought in e to the power i lambda prime i t e lambda prime h cross by divided by h cross and e to the power minus i t e lambda upon h cross from this integral from the integral you see for delta function inside the summation sign and inside the ensemble average picture when i do that there are two things one is that in the classical picture which will be valid for most of the cases the probability of energy e lambda is given in the maxwell distribution then which is e to the power minus beta e lambda by z and this part i will emphasize one second for any wave function you can see if phi is an eigen function of the hamiltonian which is lambda here this part this part this part in red i told you that this gives the time dependence in the operator or variable rj and now i can write down the whole expression it's a fourier transform over this whole part where we have a summation over all the sides for the fourier transforms at specific sides this is a p lambda which is an uh, <coughs> statistical weight for the state with energy lambda and they, there is an averaging of e to the power minus i q dot r j 0 e to the power i q dot r j prime t and this is ensemble average of this value and summation over all the atoms what does it mean physically let me just okay. what i have actually i have a summation J J prime. I have got an ensemble average of so one is that we have the energy state lambda. The probability of that is e to the power minus beta e lambda. by z partition function we are aware that this is the maxwell weight maxwellian weight e to the minus, minus e by kt upon sum over all the states and this thing this part is about dynamics of the system why because i am seeking the ensemble average of a quantity 
which has i am saying if the jth atom is at the origin at time t equal to 0 what is the position of the j prime atom at time t under the given dynamics it correlates the two and this is called a correlation function this is a correlation function and this correlation function is directly related to the double differential scattering cross section that I write d2 sigma d omega d prime. So you can see the double differential scattering cross section is given by the Fourier transform over a time Fourier transform over a large expression in which I am looking at the ensemble average probabilistically weighted with the energy e to the power of beta e lambda by z is the statistical weight and I am seeking the average value ensemble average value of one atom molecule whatever it is with the, at one side and what is the probability of another scattering unit I call it in general scattering unit at another side at time t. If there is no correlation then we can take them out of this average separately. We can do the averaging separately in ensemble I can tell you. But if they are correlated for example phonons in a solid motion of one is related to the motion of another one and then the ensemble average needs to know the correlation to get the double differential scattering cross section. I haven't told you so far how to find out e to the power i q j q dot I haven't given any prescription to find out the ensemble average and summation over all sides. I have not given any prescription. We need a prescription. If we want to know the double differential scattering cross section, we do need a prescription how to calculate that. In next part and later, I will give you at least some prescription. I can tell you all the prescription because there are various kinds of dynamics. But to know that, I have to have a prescription to figure out how to calculate Rj0 minus Rj prime t and uh, that is the game that uh, I have to either I find my model because direct Fourier transform is often not possible but here I what I want to highlight to you that the time Fourier transform over this large quantity on the right hand side you see gives me d2 sigma d omega de prime that means number of neutrons per unit solid angle per unit energy interval de prime because the energy is e prime of the outgoing neutron. So now I can shorten the expression this whole expression I can shorten it I can write n number of scatterers k prime by k this is an average over energy spin v square q because v j dagger v dagger and summation has been taken care and I write something called s q omega what is s q omega the s q omega is as I showed you wrote, wrote down over here the s q omega is 1 by twice pi h cross n. I have absorbed the n here, so I have brought in n here. It is a Fourier transform of summation over all the sides j j prime e to the power i q dot r j 0 and e to the power i q dot r j prime t. I have given the signature of 
so operators over here because in quantum mechanics these are called operators but for all our calculations I can even take them as classical positions and I will not be too wrong when I do the derivation so now this part the right part it contains the dynamics of the system and sq omega you can see this is in time and in q space and over that when you take a Fourier transform over time I go to sq omega in q and omega space while I do the experiment that means I do my experiment where I find out the wavelength of the outgoing neutron at a certain angle from there I find out the energy transfer and the wave vector transfer and that experimental data is related to the dynamics of the system and how to get them out is in the next part.